everybody and welcome to another episode of Music with Miss Sullivan. Today I'll be teaching you or helping you review how to read notes on the treble clef and we're also going to identify some important symbols in music that you'll see. Now in my way of teaching, um, I don't spend a ton of time on learning to read music mainly because that's typically near the top of our music pyramid of learning. If you take a look here, the foundation, the base of our pyramid is listening, and that's where music learning starts. Then we learn how to speak music, and by that I mean singing or playing an instrument. Then we learn to audiate, and then read and write. And today we're gonna to be working with some reading. After that is improvise and create, and at the very top is music theory. Now, just like I wouldn't teach a baby how to read a word that it's never heard before, instead I'm gonna start with a, a familiar word, maybe like mama or dada or ball or dog, I'm not gonna just throw you a picture of music and expect you to decode it. So when I teach music reading, and what we're gonna practice today is going from things we already know. However, there are some tricks that I can teach you when you're looking at music on paper. First, let's start from what we know already. You might recognize this thing, it's called a hand staff. And right now, try to make your hand look like what you see on the screen. So put a hand in front of you, probably your left hand, and put your thumb on the top and the pinky on the bottom and spread out your fingers. We've practiced singing patterns like do, me, do, because the arrow points to do. And we notice that do and me are on fingers or on lines. That would also mean that ray t ray is in spaces. So already we're working with the fact that we have five fingers and therefore five lines in music. And let's take a moment and count how many spaces there are between our fingers. There are four spaces. So remember, in music notation, you're going to see five lines and four spaces on what we call a staff. You're also going to see these symbols. On the left here is a treble clef. Go ahead and practice saying treble clef. It kind of looks like a curly S and we practice drawing this. Next, we have a sharp sign. Now this is very similar to a hashtag sign or a number sign or a tic-tac-toe board, but it, notice it's a little bit slanted and when we see it in music, it's called a sharp sign. And then we'll also see a flat sign. Now that looks like a little flat B, and that's how I remember. And you might see this before a note. And what that means is it changes the note that we call it to, instead of maybe F, to F sharp. But we'll practice that in a minute. Now these two sayings are really gonna help you to read notes on a treble clef. The first saying sounds like this. F-A-C-E face tells us every space. Go ahead and try saying that with me right now. Ready, go. F-A-C-E face tells us every space. And I put a little face here to remind you. These are the spaces. What that means is that the circle of the note, the note head, is in between lines, it's in the spaces. And there are four spaces, which is why there's only F a, C, and E. Another saying that's really important to remember, now I do this version, you might know another version, but it sounds like this. Every good bird does fly, tells us every line. Try saying that with me, ready, go. Every good bird does fly, tells us every line. And that stands for the note names or the labels of the five lines. Now, another thing to remember is that we go from bottom to top. So just remember that when you're saying these sayings and figuring out the notes that we go from the bottom to the top. The other thing you need to understand in order to read the notes of music is that we only have seven letters of music labels. We can call a note A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And once we get to G, we start over again. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. We could go backwards. That would be going down the stairs here to go F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, C, D. We can go up and down the stairs forever and ever and ever, but we only use seven note names. Now this is in what we call Western music. 
there are lots of other musical traditions that uses different labels or different understandings of notes, but these are the seven that you're going to come across today. So remember, we can go up and down the musical stairs. Now let's try this on our own. This here, we hear, I wonder if you remember that this curly thing is called a treble clef. Good job. And there's four lines and five spaces. This little hint here will help you up on top. So let's think, what note is this? Well, it's on the first space. It's not being cut in half by line. And I remember that F-A-C-E face tells us every space. So that means the first one is F. So take a look at that picture and know that that note is F. Now, sometimes the circle is going to look different. It might be hollow. It might have a dot next to it. But any note there is called F, or we sometimes call it a pitch, too. P-I-T-C-H, pitch. Now, how about this one? It's on the first space, but now we see one of our other symbols. That's a sharp sign. That means it's still an F, but we would call it an F sharp and we see that in recorder music. Now for all you fancy people out there, we could also have the sharp sign up here in what's called our do signature or our key signature. That means that G is do, but that is also a trick for us to know that this is still the note F sharp. We won't see that much in this lesson, but just in case you wanted to know. Let's try another one. All right, I'm looking here. The circle is in the third space, and let's remember that saying again, F-A-C-E. That's the third one, so that must be the note C. Good. Or how about this one? Oop, this is a line, and it's actually, remember, the last line, because we go from the bottom to the top. We start at the bottom, now we get the top. So the saying for lines is, every good bird does fly. You might notice that F's are repeated. That's because we only have seven letters, so of course notes are going to repeat. We can have many F's, many C's, and we'll actually see an example of that here, but that is another F. Uh-oh. What do we do when a note doesn't seem to be in the spaces or the lines? That's when we remember that the music notes go like a staircase. So go to the nearest note that you do know. We know that top line is F. We just figured that out. Every good bird does fly. Now it seems to be one stair above. So using our musical alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, that means this note is a G. And you're going to see a few notes that are above or below what we call the treble clef staff. Or how about this one? It's below. Now let's think about the nearest note we know. We know this first line, every good bird does fly, is an E. That means that on the staircase below it would be a D. Remember, A, B, C, D, E. So it's kind of like saying your alphabet sometimes. Oh, and now we see a D again, but we see another symbol. That's our flat sign. That means that this note is called D flat. And here's another really important note you should know when you read music. Again, using your musical alphabet and knowing the nearest notes. We know that first line is E. We figured out the one right below that is D. And we walk one more stair down in our musical alphabet. That's the letter C. C, D, E. Now this note is also sometimes called middle C. But it's a really important um, note, in particularly if you've ever taken piano lessons. So memorize that one, and that one's called C, and it will really help you. Now, before you try out some stuff on your own, I recommend finding a piece of paper and a pencil and copying down this picture as a key for yourself. It's very normal to need to refer to this key until you remember the lines and the spaces. You could even write down the sayings. F-A-C-E face tells us every space. Every good bird does fly tells us every line. So pause the video here if you would like to copy down this picture because it'll really help you with the things we can do at home. 